early in this ACC showdown between North Carolina and Syracuse. With Corey Alexander, I'm Doug Sherman. We've had a good start to the ball game on both ends. Syracuse jumped out early, but uh, led by Cole Anthony, the heels coming right back. Well, we got two of the best freshman point guards in the ACC, Joe Girard III, Cole Anthony going at it early. Two guys from the state of New York. And I'm sure a little bit of bragging rights on this game and getting these two teams a win. But Syracuse right now, a very important game for the Orange as you look at their tournament resume and they continue to try to find a way to get into the NCAA tournament. They're going to need to win out throughout the regular season in the ACC and also do some damage in Greensboro at the ACC tournament. But yet the Orange don't feel as though their hopes are all the way dashed. So far in the game, Joe Girard has five points. Barama Sidibe, three. And for North Carolina, Anthony with two. Armando Bacot at the free throw line gets one out of two. He now has three points. And then Leaky Black with four points. And UNC in front, nine to eight. And here is Elijah Hughes. Averaging on the year 18.8 points per game. Picks up his dribble. Dangerous pass. Finds its way to Beheim. Beheim leans in and gets the roll. And with that basket, Buddy Beheim surpassing his production in comparison to the game in Pittsburgh where he was injured in the first half but scoreless at that point. And it has to feel good for Buddy to see the basketball go through. Hey, you recognize those three guys sitting across the court from us. Tom Brady, Julian Edelman, and Jimmy Fallon. Star power in effect here at the Carrier Dome this afternoon. Now, should we say former Patriot Tom Brady? No, okay. can't say can't say that yet. Although when he was introduced before the game, you know we're in Buffalo Bills country here in Central New York. He was roundly booed by all the Bills fans well, in the building. We will say that Jimmy Fallon definitely received the greatest ovation <laughs> of the three of them introduced here. No doubt, now, Fallon's an upstate New Yorker from Saugerties. Leaky Black kicks the ball. And I respect that. I like that from the Orange faithful. Mm -hmm. you, if you're a Bills fan, stick with your Bills. You're not going to cheer for Tom Brady if he comes to Buffalo to play the Bills. Don't cheer for him when he comes to Syracuse. Oh, and they're not going <laughs> to. Here goes Gerard. Had a shot, turned it down to Behan. Long two. And Baycott pulls down the rebound. North Carolina has lost seven of its last eight, but they did win their last time out Tuesday against North Carolina State. And we witnessed, Corey, this morning during shoot-around. It's a Tar Heels team that's still very much together. They are, and they had a great spirit about them in their shoot-around. This morning, another offensive rebound by Brandon Robinson in the dump-off to find Garrison Brooks. But this is a team that understands the task ahead. They know that their only chance of playing in the NCAA tournament is to win the ACC tournament. It's been that type of year for North Carolina. But yet, the only thing that Roy Williams asked of this team is to simply get better every time out. And he feels as though they've done that. Bayheim with consecutive buckets. Back to a one-point game. I'll tell you what, if North Carolina gets to Greensboro 10 days from now as the 15th seed, which is quite possible, They'll be the most dangerous 15 seed in ACC tournament they history. They may be the most dangerous 15 seed in any tournament history when you consider this, this team has played well enough to win a lot of games. They've lost tr so many games at the end, many of those at the buzzer, but still a dangerous group, especially when you consider their ability to offensive rebound and put points on the board in the second chance fashion. Robinson knocks the ball away. Beheim double teamed, and the foul is called. Robinson and Brooks had him bottled up, but V Rob is called for the reach in. Well, the Tar Heels on the year 11 and 17. They got off to such a great start, ranked as high as fifth in the country. They beat Oregon early, but then the injuries have just piled up, and things have gone sideways. They really have. But you know, honestly, I think that pick to finish second was too high for this team. I'm not sure their talent level was at that point, but this is a team coming in that you thought would be in the top five or six in the ACC and still a tournament team this year as Elijah Hughes knocks down the corner three. But when you look at North Carolina, injuries to Brandon Robinson to start the season. 
And then you consider Cole Anthony's injury where he missed 11 games. So many guys have missed games. 88 games coming into this one missed by injury by the Tar Heels. And it has really cost them, and especially when you consider the fact that they've lost so many close games mm -hmm. on a record pace for Roy Williams in this Tar Heel program. That uh, really is remarkable. This is the worst season for North Carolina basketball since all the way back in 2001, 2002, back when Matt Doherty was the head coach. Garrison Brooks with the hammer. And that was great execution against the zone by the Tar Heels. Two screens to get Cole Anthony into the middle. As soon as the help steps up, he's able to toss it up to Garrison Brooks for the finish. Hughes into the lane. Sadibe had a shot. Armando Baycott, the only Tar Heel who has played in every game this year. Now he is hobbling back up the court. Off the bench, Christian Keeling. He has been instant offense over the last eight games for UNC. He really has. He's been their savior considering Brandon Robinson's injury. Injuries over the last few weeks as... The officials call the timeout to allow Baycott to get out of the game, but North Carolina executing on the offensive end against the zone, the two screens, allowing Cole Anthony to get into the middle of the paint. The nice finish by Garrison Brooks, that number. When you start talking about Jim Brown, let's say, okay, the great in two sports mm -hmm. of its own, but then you add Derek Coleman. On the basketball floor, John Wallace. Yep. Danny Shades. I mean, and who, who am I missing? Ernie Davis? Ernie Davis, the Heisman Trophy winner, as well as Floyd Little. Those are the big three in football. And we didn't even mention Marty Burns, who was a great player in basketball here in the 70s, went on to have a nice NBA career with the Indiana Pacers. So it's so big on this campus, the number 44, that years ago, Corey, they changed both the zip code to include 44, and they changed the phone exchange to be 443 as opposed to 423. That's how big the number 44 is. Here. That that is impressive. I mean Ernie Davis, Derek Coleman, and and again, I, I'm I'm not a you know Syracuse alum as you are. But when you put Jim Brown in the mix, yep. <laughs> it doesn't get any greater than that. And you mentioned he was a two-sport star. He actually played four sports here. Greatest lacrosse player ever, greatest football player ever. But he also played basketball in the 50s for Syracuse and also track and field. And I believe we got the offensive foul on Cole Anthony on that possession. And he was actually getting rid of the basketball and with this North Carolina team, depth is not their strength. So when you consider foul trouble in this game, that's one of the things you got to keep your eye on. Quincy Garrier's come off the Syracuse bench. Beheim bounces that ball out of bounds. Third Syracuse turnover. But one of the things you can see early in this game and I'm sure it's been a conversation between Roy Williams and Cole Anthony. Cole Anthony wants to push the tempo as Keeling is able to knock down another shot. That will be a two. But Christian Keeling has continued his hot shooting. And Corey, you, you know what it's like. What Keeling has experienced the last three weeks, just kind of an awakening. The confidence that he plays with now you just didn't see for the first couple of months. Well, one of the things that Roy Williams has asked him to do is just go play basketball. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about a grad transfer, a young man that knows what he's doing. As that's his second offensive foul, the Tar Heels have stepped up and seen players from the Orange attacking the paint. Out of control. And done a great job stepping in and getting the offensive foul. Our full day of college basketball is highlighted by these two big games. Up next, this one's a sonic blockbuster. Number seven, Duke, taking on Virginia. And then ninth-ranked Maryland leads the Big Ten by two games. It'll host number 24, Michigan State. Both games are on ESPN on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Cole Anthony for three. Timeout, Syracuse. Well, we talked about... Back at the Carrier Dome, North Carolina on a seven nothing run with the basketball Fifteen. 
Keeling. A back tap, a Carolina staple, continues the possession. And Carolina snapping the basketball around the perimeter, forcing this Syracuse zone to try to react. And one of the things coming into this game, if you're Syracuse, you look at, well, this has not been a great shooting North Carolina team, but the Tar Heels off to a hot start here offensively. Bryson Goodeye off the Syracuse bench. Miss fires on his first attempt. There's the middle of that zone we talked so much about. Who for Carolina can make the orange pay on that possession? It was Justin Pierce. But the difference is when you consider the fact that Cole Anthony and Christian Keeling have both knocked down three-pointers in the last couple possessions. Brandon Robinson on the floor as well. The defenders on the wings of that zone don't want to help, which is going to leave that middle wide open. And when you get the basketball in there, guys like Justin Pierce are going to have their opportunities to make plays. 11 unanswered points for the Tar Heels. Through the hands of Brooks. And the 6'10 junior, Marek Dolajai, trying to go coast to coast. And it's an offensive foul. And a third offensive foul for the Orange attacking the basket. And right now, Carolina having his. The carrier dome with some star power. Jimmy Fallon seems to have his own. Uh, Rooting section, his own fan section here at the Dome. Boy, how about the Tar Heels? There's plenty of people in the building as well wearing Carolina blue, and they are watching the Tar Heels on a 14-0 run. And although much further north than where he's from, Cole Anthony feeling right at home in his home state right now, getting off to a great start here at the Dome. Didn't the New York City native say it was feeling kind of Canadian up here today? <laughs> It is a bit chilly here in central New York today. 27 degrees right now. And that'll describe Syracuse's offense as well. They've been stuck on 17 for a while. But you talked about the looseness and the fact that this North Carolina team has stuck together. These guys have enjoyed being teammates this year. Roy Williams told us that there's been no bickering. There's been no arguing. It's just a team that's trying to get better and finding, trying to find a way to win games as they near the end of their season. And they know that the light is getting dimmer at the end of the tunnel. Another Syracuse turnover. This time it's Hughes. Robinson able to save it. Well, you know how it goes, Corey. You've got a team here in North Carolina that's won only four times in conference play. I mean, they basically went almost winless the month of January and haven't done much winning since. Lob to Pierce? No. And usually those teams wind up being fractured as we get to late February, but that's clearly not the case with UNC. No, it's not. And, and seeing them today, a team that's getting along very well, and it's really they haven't had a chance to gel because there's been so many injuries as Keeling knocks down another three. Beautiful find from Cole Anthony attacking the paint and Jim Beheim has seen enough as his team here on, at their alumni game in front of so many that have come to see the Orange find themselves down 16 here in the first half. Well, it should be no surprise that Christian Keeling can score, you know, and they'll feel like there's time to write a third narrative. It is. Nine of their last 13 opponents have scored game-tying or game-winning points in the last 27 seconds. That's the heartbreakers that North Carolina has dealt with this year, and they've also given up a number of double-digit leads. So if you're the Orange right now, you don't give up on it. You continue to find ways to attack North Carolina because this is a team that will let you back in the ballgames. Andrew Playtack has come into the game. He is from Gilderland, New York. Has a big cheering section. He's made the two-hour drive from the Albany area. Buddy Behan, tough shot. Able to get the roll. Well, after a six-minute drought, back-to-back -back buckets by Buddy Behan. And Buddy Behan is developing as a basketball player, not just a shooter anymore. We've seen him go to the mid-range, knock down buckets in two-point range, and continues to develop. In and out for Robinson. Just over four minutes remaining in the half. Syracuse down 12. Sidibe denied. 
but a foul is called on Pierce. Timeout here in the Carrier Dome. Coach Williams' team up by a dozen. Dion, yeah. Well, Brady played in this building before. He did. Yeah, so, you know, it's one thing to show up and support, but it's something completely different to put the jersey on. I, I can understand that. Brady played in here for the Big Blue. His senior year back in the fall of 99, uh, Michigan came into the Dome, and uh, he got the start, but was replaced after one quarter by Drew Henson, who wound up being the star of the game for Big Blue. Pressure broken, fall into the hands of Playtech. And one thing we haven't spoke much about, because Syracuse has actually played better, but Mark Dolezal picking up his third foul here in the first half, and going to have to miss the remainder of this first half. And that's one of the things that Jim Beheim has talked about with him. He has to stay out of foul trouble and stay on the floor. They're a different team with him on the court, but give the Orange credit. They've been able to respond with a 6-0 run since the timeout after North Carolina got out to the 17-point lead. Yeah, Corey, as you know, that's been one of the stories for Syracuse. Their three bigs in the rotation have habitually been in foul trouble throughout the season, and how well can they work around it? You know, but it's interesting that he almost wants for Sidibe to get into foul trouble because they know he's being aggressive. Speaking of aggressive, Buddy Beheim has been the guy for the Orange here in the first half single-handedly making this a single-digit game. Shot clock at five. Cole Anthony rises up, around and out. Beheim's been feeling it. Trying again for three, front rimmed it. Here comes Carolina with under three minutes remaining in the half. Brooks draws a crowd, finds Pierce, but it's taken away. Elijah Hughes. Hughes off the hesitation, tough shot. And the foul against North Carolina. Tonight's NBA Saturday primetime game has the Celtics hosting the Rockets. Our coverage tips with the jump at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. And you can always watch both on the ESPN app from anywhere. You see Kemba Walker there. He is kind of an inspiration to this North Carolina team, right? Specifically to Cole Anthony, who they recognize their only way into the NCAA tournament is to win the ACC tournament earlier today. I asked Cole, I said, do you remember watching Kimball Walker mm -hmm. in 2011 at UConn? He said, absolutely. And I asked him, I said, can you do that? And he said, there's no other way. <laughs> Brooks, block, Sidibe. 11 straight for Syracuse. Gerard turned it over. Anthony, end to end. Absorbed contact with no call. Now a chance for three for Brooks. Another offensive rebound for North Carolina. Garrison Brooks putting in the two, an opportunity for the three point play to temporarily quiet the crowd here. Corey coming up on the Jeep halftime report. We'll catch up on an ACC shocker earlier this afternoon, plus a big upset in the Big 12. And of course, our first half stats and highlights, which will include runs for each team. Carolina with the first big run. Syracuse now on its own run, under two minutes remaining in the half. Beheim is fouled by Keelan. Now, we saw in the first couple of minutes of the game, Buddy Beheim was playing on a gimpy left ankle, which he turned their last time out. He lost his shoe, and you wondered if he could play on, but he has shown in the last five, six minutes, he's okay. And we've seen the same thing from Elijah Hughes after only playing three minutes in the NC State game, coming back and going for 25 points at Florida State. So, you know, not a deep team when you consider the orange, but a resilient group. 
who refuse to allow their teammates to go out there on the floor. They're willing to play through injuries. And according to the way this one has gone, Buddy Beheim having a similar performance as Hughes had against Florida State, getting off to a great start here in the first half. Beheim's got 13 points to lead all scorers. Offensive foul. And that's going to be two on Cole Anthony here in the first half. And both of his have been offensive fouls. And you see Anthony trying to swing through. Elijah Hughes stepping over. I'm not sure everyone's going to agree that that was an offensive foul. <laughs> Certainly he doesn't. <laughs> But well, instead, he takes a seat with his second personal. Well, I mean, it's it's really not up for debate as Beheim backs in feeling and is able to finish over the top and runs back just letting the Syracuse crowd know he's too small. Beheim 6'6", six, six. Keeling listed at 6'3". Out of bounds. It'll stay at this end. Now, we have seen from Buddy Beheim big offensive explosions in halves this year how about what he did against Georgetown when he dropped 25 against the Hoyas in the second half alone well he can get hot and do it quickly and he's done that here in the first half to make this a game once again as Playtech chases an offensive rebound and I believe he's going to be able to shoot two free throws just on his effort alone trying to track down two points Second foul on Sidibe, who takes a look up at the big screen to see if indeed he agrees. So Andrew Playtech will head to the free throw line. 6'4", Jr., who had a real good five minutes in the last game in the first half against North Carolina State. Provided great energy against the Wolfpack. Playtack with 19 friends and family members here in the building watching him play close to home. As you mentioned, a two and a half hour drive. And you've seen a spirited effort from Playtech. This is probably the best they've seen in the film in a while. Sidibe sticks it back in. You see, Sidibe is already nearly at a double-double. Nine points, ten rebounds. And Roy Williams not happy about that. He felt as though that was the exact same call that Cole Anthony was getting the offensive foul on that Buddy Beheim used to get to the rim right in front of the officials. And Roy Williams still having conversations <laughs> regarding it. Final possession of the half for Syracuse. Ten seconds to go. Elijah Hughes looking to create off the bounce. Working on Leaky Black. It's knocked away out of bounds. Syracuse will keep with 3.2 on the clock. Sidibe tried to throw it down and he was fouled. We have not seen this sort of aggression in Sidibe well, in we, three years. But we were talking about, you know, where Dolezal, Coach Beheim wants to keep Dolezal out of foul trouble, but he doesn't really feel as though Barama Sidibe is being aggressive if he's not in foul trouble. And that's one of the things he actually played the first half of the Georgia Tech game here at home with zero fouls. And Beheim was not happy with his activity and the way that he played in that first half. Today, Sidibe actually ended up fouling out of that game all five fouls in the second half, but yet a very productive performance for him. Fun first half here in Syracuse. The Tar Heels went on an extended run first, but the Orange have pulled right back into it. Led by Buddy Beheim's Chris Keeling, his little buddy, going back down the floor. Carolina with the basketball to begin the second half. 
Pierce gets the start along with Brooks, Robinson, Anthony, and Leaky Black. Syracuse in that zone with Beheim and Gerard out front, Hughes, Sidibe, and Dolajai underneath. Pierce blocked by Sidibe. What a game he has been playing. Brooks off the nice feed puts it in. He's got 13 points. And great presence of mind by Garrison Brooks right there to be able to get that shot off before the defense can come over, just flipping it toward the basket. Showing great touch. Dolajai trying to go to work. First bucket of the day for the 6'10 junior from Slovakia. And Armando Baycott not starting the second half. We saw him go out due to injury early in this game. Justin Pierce getting the second half start. And we'll see how that affects North Carolina, especially on the glass as Cole Anthony knocks down another three. And he's shooting the basketball extremely well. Now 11 points for Anthony here, who's been very good. Had to sit the end of that first half with the second foul. And he's had a strong performance here in the dome. Hughes blocked by Black. Out of bounds, Syracuse will keep. Well, North Carolina has used nine different starting lineups this season. Roy Williams having to shuffle the deck again here for the start of the second half. And again, as I mentioned in the first half, Baycott's the only guy who has played every game so far this year for the Tar Heels. This now the 29th game of the year. But that doesn't mean he hasn't been dinged up at times throughout. He's been dinged up a number of times this year. He's had a concussion and a severely sprained ankle that he actually was able to play through. But North Carolina now going small and putting Garrison Brooks on the interior surrounded by four guards. Christian Keeling playing so well. Roy Williams getting him on the floor early in this game. And he'll actually play along the baseline, which will make it extremely difficult for the Syracuse zone to be able to find it. From the corner. That's a three ball for Brandon Robinson. But that's what you do. Now you have four shooters on the floor, guys that are capable of knocking down the three alongside Garrison Brooks. And Garrison Brooks, who commands so much attention when he catches the basketball in the paint, will have his options of shooters around him. Long rebound. Here comes Robinson. Fancy pass to Keeling. Out to Black. Turns down the shot. Gets it back. Puts it up. And there are the Tar Heels crashing that offensive glass. Sadibe comes away with it. Here comes Hughes. Fancy shot. Plus the foul. Great recognition by Elijah Hughes in transition. Knowing Cole Anthony has two fouls, Anthony does not want to foul him and attacks Cole Anthony one-on-one. -on -one. Anthony somewhat getting out of the way so he doesn't get the foul but Brandon Robinson coming in and just adding insult to injury nice finish there by Hughes and using the rim as a shield an opportunity for the three-point play well the East Carolina University transfer has struggled with his jump shot today only one of five from beyond the arc he completes the three-point play after getting Robinson to commit his third foul and we've also received word that Baycott is not going to come back for Carolina he is on the bench, still in uniform, but uh, they say he won't play again this afternoon. And if my memory serves me correctly, this will be the third game this season where that has happened with Baycott. And he played only three minutes at UNCW back in November due to that uh, concussion you talked about. And then on December the 4th against Ohio State, limited to seven minutes with a left ankle sprain. Dolezal steps by the defender and puts it in. That's a nice move by Dolezal, but Dolezal immediately turns and picks up his fourth foul, trying to stop Cole Anthony in transition. And these are the fouls that really drive Jim Beheim nuts. As Dolezal makes a great play off the pick and pop, the finish, but trying to get back in transition, fouls Anthony. And just like that, Mark Dolzhai with four fouls to try to play with for the remaining 16 and a half minutes of this game. Boy, we just had a great battle inside for position between Garrison Brooks and Barama Sadibe, who was called for the foul. 
And that's his third. So Syracuse's two primary bigs now have four and three fouls respectively for Dolajai and Sidibe. And interesting that Jim Beheim is going to leave Dolajai on the floor with those four fouls with so much time remaining here in this half. Beheim deflects the pass. Robinson tees it up. He's got it. And we talked about his shooting struggles. Three for 15 in the last three games from the three-point arc coming back from injury. But now here to start the second half, his second three-point field goal made is Brandon Robinson starting to find a rhythm. Beheim answers with a tough two. And speaking of rhythm, Buddy Beheim in a great rhythm after returning from the ankle injury against Pitt on Wednesday night. Again, trying to find Brooks inside. He's got the position. Able to bank it in. But if you're North Carolina, that's where you want to continue to go. Sadibe with three fouls. Dolezal with four. You want to give Garrison Brooks as many touches as you possibly can. Sadibe. They say he never possessed the ball, so no double dribble, no travel. And Sadibe really starting to become a factor off that screen and roll where teams are going to blitz the guards and try to take them out of it as Cole Anthony now shooting the basketball confidently knocks down another three. Fourth made three for the Tar Heels here in the second half. When we're talking uh, Elijah Hughes on the nice back cut off the feed from Dolezal. But that's why Dolezal is so important. You're talking about 6'9", 6'10", their four-man who can make passes like that. Why he's so integral to this offense and the defense of the team and keeping him on the floor. Speaking of important, <laughs> right now Cole Anthony is feeling it. This is reminiscent of the Cole Anthony we saw go for a freshman record 34 points on opening night at home over Notre Dame shooting the basketball like this from three. Young man out of Oak Hill Academy in Virginia with That's 17 right. points. Don't go to the first school. You go to where he graduated <laughs> from. On this day, I'll give that to you. Only because he told you that. Exactly. <laughs> Gerard tries again, this time from the corner. Carolina with separation again. This is kind of how the first half went. But then North Carolina allowed Syracuse to creep back into it. Keeling with another three-point shot. UNC is on fire. 64-48, Tar Heels. Heels to start the second half. And right now, they've used that to build the 16-point lead. And let's take a look at how Cole Anthony is staying ready, presented by Lowe. Well, and one of the things for Cole Anthony, he loves to take the personal challenge. Joe Girard, the all-time leading scorer in New York State high school history. And, you know, of course, Cole Anthony's from the state of New York. So when you consider coming in and Cole Anthony's heard the talk about Joe Girard this year, Cole Anthony just now getting back into his groove after missing those 11 games, it's one of those games where you know that he's taking it personally and you see it in his play thus far this afternoon. Well, we've only got another week left in the regular season as the Orange try to get it to Dolojai. And I think there is a tremendous race among the freshman class of the ACC to make the all-freshman team. I think off the long rebound, here come the Tar Heels. Keeling, no. And it's Beheim who has it. I'm glad you mentioned that because that will be the most difficult voting. Right. So this Vernon year. Carey's going to be the, the freshman of the year. Oh, I can, I can, give, you, I can give you four definites. I can give you the whole five. Now, honestly, if Cole Anthony's eligible. And that's the thing, too. <laughs> we'll break that down. People to say that two of these three have had a great freshman year, mm -hmm. where you would say that the other maybe has not lived up to expectations. But when you look at the numbers and you see how difficult it is as a freshman, especially in this league, to be successful, it makes more sense as to what we talked about before, why it's going to be so difficult to build the ACC all-rookie team this year. But I can tell you right now, I've got four definites. 
Well, it, I, I think there are as many as 10 legitimate candidates, and I'm not sure there are four hard and fast. Okay. Well, let me give you my four. My four, of course, Vernon Carey, I think, is a runaway favorite for ACC Rookie of the Year. Yep. So that's legitimate. And we got a look. Brandon Robinson actually calling for a sub. We talked about his ankle, and it looks as though he just turned that ankle once again. But back to this blind resume, when we look at the, the three different players, those three different freshmen, Cole Anthony with tremendous expectations, and you look at his numbers, the 6.2 rebounds per game in the middle, the 3.8 assists above the other players. But everyone would look at it and say, Landers Nollies had a great freshman season. Yep. Joe Girard the third has had a great freshman season. But you look at Anthony's numbers that are better, if not at least the same from a field goal percentage, and you consider the fact that he's averaging almost 20 points per game coming in, the expectations may have been too much for Cole Anthony to live up to, especially when you consider the injury. Sure, it's all relative. Cole Anthony, as you know, as he comes up with the turnover, was number two in last year's ESPN 100, the number two recruit in the country. So expectations, of course, are going to be sky high. Dad played in the NBA, ever, but everybody's known who he is as a basketball player the last couple of years coming in, where the others, Landers Nolly, last year was a red shirt in Blacksburg. So you kind of forget about him in terms of what kind of impact he might have. And then Joe Girard came out of Glens Falls as a prolific scorer, two sports star, won a couple of state football championships in this building. But the reality is he was a three star recruit. And so, like you say, you look at those numbers, they're pretty similar in a lot of ways, but you just view them from a different prism. Well, and when you look at that team, and so for me, we talked Vernon Carey, he'll be on the team. Landers Nolly, I think, is a member of the all rookie team in the ACC. I honestly believe that Pat Williams from Florida State as Keeling knocks down another three-pointer. Patrick Williams will be another guy that is on that team. And so when you look at who fills it out, you've got Cole Anthony. Joe Girard is in the mix for that. And there's someone that I'm missing. I'm trying to think of it because I have four guys who were a definite to me. Well, Justin Champagny of That's Pittsburgh who it was. Justin Champagny. Is who I would put on. Gerard gets the roll. And I think Champagny's a lot. And so do I. And I, I think Jay Heath at Boston College could wind up on that team. But Jay Heath at Boston College, I believe, deserves a lot of credit for that team. But he's in the same boat as Joe Gerard. If Cole Anthony's on that team, then those guys miss out. Right. So if Cole Anthony's eligible, you have to say that he's had the best freshman year of all of those players, regardless of record. The fact that he's missed 11 games and still averaging 20 points per game, six rebounds and four assists, that's pretty impressive for a freshman. No doubt he would be leading the ACC if he had enough eligibility in terms of games played. But do you ding him for having missed 11 games as opposed to somebody who's going to go and answer the bell every single game? I would still put Cole on my all-freshman team. Gerard, no. Some of the others, I don't know if Pat Williams is going to make it, although I think he might wind up ultimately being the best out of the entire class. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I have a question. Yeah. I have questions now. You don't think that Pat Williams will make it when Pat Williams most likely will be the ACC sixth man of the year? Yeah, I think that's possible. But Well, Sadibe has been the guy on the interior for the Orange here, trying to find a way to get his team back in this game. Not so happy. You are not the conductor, young man. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Fallon, one of the uh, celebrity guests of one of the Syracuse donors sitting courtside by the Syracuse bench. But Jimmy is definitely more ingratiated into this game than anyone else as North Carolina breaks the press easily. But oftentimes with pressure, all you want a team to do is take a quick shot. Syracuse gets what it wants out of that possession. And Hughes coming up with the rebound, feeling fouling him 94 feet away from their own basket. There you see Tom Brady, Julian Edelman, and Jimmy Fallon sitting courtside. Edelman and Fallon taking on the orange spirit. Yeah, TB not so much. TB wants to stay neutral as he can right now. That's yeah. why he's wearing all black. He doesn't want to give off anything. Doesn't want anybody to say, oh, well, he's at Syracuse, so he's got to be going to Buffalo. We don't, <laughs> we, we don't want any of that happening right now. He's trying to stay neutral. Midway through the second half, 
Elijah Hughes, who has had a quiet game scoring the basketball, turns it over. You know what, let's finish up our all-freshman team discussion. So we talked about Vernon Carey, yes. We talked about some of the others. I also want to say Tyrese Radford of Virginia Tech doesn't get much love. He certainly should be in the conversation. And then two guys, David Johnson of Louisville and Isaiah Wong of Miami. To beat the buzzer again, Carolina stays hot. Those two guys didn't have the opportunities early in the year, but they have been tremendous in recent weeks and to me at least should get some consideration. I believe there are 10 guys that won't make it that mm. should get some consideration. I mean, that, that is going to be the toughest vote for the voters this year because there's so many guys that are deserving and have had good freshman seasons, but yet you only have five spots. Quincy Gurrier with his first two. And that's one of the beautiful things about college basketball. We've had the turnover, losing such star power out of the ACC from last year to this year, and so the league's been down. It seems to be restocked that if this freshman class across the league can stay around for another couple of years, the ACC will be right back where it's been. Well, I can tell you it's a few of those at the top that you won't see for a couple of years. Right, but if you're talking 10, 11, 12, they're not all going. That right? guy that keeps making threes, <laughs> I don't think you're going to see him for a couple of years. Even though he's wearing two on his jersey, he is one and, and done. done. Cole Anthony has been lighting it up here in the second half. He has been very good. Underwent right knee surgery back in mid-December for a partially torn meniscus. Uh, meniscus. Missed 11 games, and this is his ninth game back in the line. And took a lot of unfair criticism when he came back because of his field goal percentage and his shot attempts. But one thing for certain, he was not in rhythm. He was not 100%. But Cole Anthony only knows one way to play, and that is full speed ahead. He's been very under control tonight, taking good shots, but he only, only understands to be aggressive. And that's what many NBA people love about him, is regardless of the noise around him, he's going to continue to be himself and try to will his team to a win. That hasn't happened a lot since he's been back. Only one win for them since he's been back in the lineup but you can see this team is playing much better and he's getting used to being back on the floor so Bay out of the game got a nice ovation 17 points 13 rebounds for the orange center and so Bay playing his best basketball here late in the season but we talked about the importance of importance of this game for syracuse and right now north carolina is definitely playing the spoiler with a 14 point lead Eight minutes remain. Second half, Carolina's made eight of ten from beyond the three-point line, while Syracuse has missed seven out of eight. The Tar Heels well in control. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots, now in two great tropical flavors. And in part by Boost Mobile. Step up with Boost Mobile and get a super reliable, super fast network. And Jimmy Fallon, who laughed hysterically at the guy that took the half-court shot, probably shouldn't have done so, especially after his three-point attempt <laughs> landed in about the same spot. Christian Keeling continuing his excellent play in recent weeks. And Doug, we talked about the freshman, and Joe Girard III got off to a great start, scored five points in the first three minutes of this game, but hasn't scored since. And North Carolina's defense has locked up on Girard. And one of the things that Syracuse is doing, and I love it when Jim Beheim does this, they're actually pressuring 94 feet. He normally uses this only when they're down big, but North Carolina's done a great job of handling the pressure, not turning it over. But quick shots are just as good as a turnover, and right now, North Carolina being patient around the perimeter after breaking the pressure. Five to shoot. Robinson. And a long rebound comes to Keeling. But that crushes you right there. After you have a defensive possession where you spend 30 seconds guarding, and then you don't come up with the offensive rebound, Leaky Black catching it in the middle of the zone. 
and getting the bucket. That's 40 seconds of defense that the Q's played to only give up a bucket. And that can be demoralizing at times, especially when you're trying to mount a comeback. Guerrier, the freshman from Quebec. <laughs> Garrison Brooks quietly has had a really good game for North Carolina. Another double-double for him. Here he goes underneath for two more. Is he the most improved player in the ACC? He's right there, but honestly, as a starter last year and having some big moments, I'm going to have to go with Moses Wright of Georgia Tech, even though Garrison Brooks has had a special year, but I honestly do believe that Garrison Brooks is a second-team All-ACC performer this season. He has been the guy for the Tar Heels. Beheim for three. Give him 20. Kick ball. And yeah, once again, the stat line for Garrison Brooks is really impressive, Corey. 19 points on 8 of 12 shooting. He's made all three of his free throws, which has not always been the case this year. He's had some good games and not so good games. 13 rebounds, 4 assists. And Garrison Brooks has been the rock for North Carolina. We've seen him dejected after many of these losses. Oh, yeah. He's played his heart out. Has two 30-point games on the season. One against NC State, one against Georgia Tech. And again, he has continued to give them the production and shed the glasses early in the game. Three minutes in. We've seen him wearing the glasses for the past couple of weeks. Well, he's had multiple corneal abrasions this year, and the goggles have come and gone. Well, Christian Keeling is shooting the basketball like he got glasses four weeks ago, <laughs> maybe four games ago, because he has continued to shoot a hot basketball. He has tripled his production over the last seven games in comparison to what he did for the first 21 games of this season. Gary lays it in. And one of the areas where North Carolina has struggled this year has been late game scenarios. They've given up double digit leads in games five times in ACC play and they've lost those games. So that's one of the areas and I'm talking double digit second half leads. Right. And where they've had that here tonight. So right now the pressure trying to get them sped up a bit but North Carolina doing a great job of handling it to this point. Our NBA Sunday special comes to you from the Big Easy with LeBron James and the Western Conference leading Lakers taking on Zion Williamson and the Pelicans. Coverage tips with NBA Countdown at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. Bryson Goodine, a freshman guard into the game for Syracuse in place of Joe Girard. Beheim! A nice action by the Orange to get Beheim a look in the middle of the painted area. But the one thing that North Carolina is doing is running the Orange off the three-point line. The Syracuse hasn't had much success at all from beyond the arc in this game. Four for 19, my last check. Roy Williams is used to having a team that puts points on the board. And I'll tell you what, this is now four consecutive halves where they've had 40 or more points. They had not done it more than consecutive halves until today. Well, this has been one of the lowest scoring seasons in North Carolina basketball history. Their 71 points per game is the lowest since 1981-82, where they happened to win a national championship, uh -huh. scoring 66.7 points per game. So, you know, but as you mentioned, that that was under Dean Smith. The Roy Williams teams have always been high scoring teams. The way this team is shot this year hasn't allowed them to be able to do that, but that hasn't been the case here tonight. Four minutes remaining in regulation. Behan, air ball. Foul in the backcourt takes us to our under four media timeout. Carolina hoping not to allow another double-digit lead to slip away. Syracuse doing everything it can, and it's home for Cuse trying to get into the NCAA tournament as an at-large was maybe ajar today with no more wiggle room. But now the way it's looking, it appears that both Syracuse and North Carolina will head to Greensboro in 10 days, needing to win out 
to get into the field of 68. Yeah, but with 342 remaining, I would like to say that uh, there's still a chance for the Orange. This, this North Carolina team has struggled to finish out games all season long, and we'll see if they've grown from their recent success versus North Carolina State. Well, that's a good start. That definitely does help. Getting the basketball inside to Garrison Brooks, who's able to finish through the contact and have the opportunity for the and one. But when you watch North Carolina this year, it's must-see TV, especially at the end of the games with Leeds, because they found every possible way to lose games. And right now, with a 15-point lead with three and a half remaining, Christian Keeling limping off and my goodness coach Williams again has to go to his bench as one of his players hobbles off the floor and that's the year has been for the Tar Heels when they get something going in a positive manner there's always something to hold them back and you see healing Get another look. And not sure if he steps on Elijah Hughes' foot or what you see there, but it doesn't look like much. But barely putting pressure on it as he comes off the floor. Elijah Hughes now with 15 points after the triple. Down to three minutes remaining. Sounded like contact. Brooks keeps working. Lost out of bounds to Syracuse. Twelve-point game, 256 remaining. And right now, if you're North Carolina, does the thoughts of the past games creep into your mind? Or have they learned enough to be able to finish it out? Sadibe. Now gets back up after a hard fall, and then the foul given by Hughes. To answer your question, maybe it was a rhetorical, Corey. I would say no, not yet, not at this point. Is Carolina thinking, uh-oh. They've been pretty well firmly in control, and I haven't seen that really slip here in the second half. Okay, so you're basing this on what you've seen from their body language and their mannerisms in this game. Yes, okay. absolutely. And it would be defeatist for them to think otherwise. But if you've lost five ACC games where you've had a double-digit lead in the second half, and I think back specifically to where the Virginia game where they lose on a last-second shot by Thomas Walter Tenzai, and then you have the shot by Nate Leshesky versus Notre Dame. Right. You have the miracle by the Duke Blue Devils where Trey Jones is able to throw the basketball off the rim perfectly and get it back and make a shot into overtime, and then you lose that game. So when you think all that in consideration, that's not something that creeps into the mind of these players on the floor no. as it moves forward. It's a 14-point game with two and a half minutes to go. Those were all much tighter at this point. It would have to get down to a seven or eight-point game for them to start thinking about it. Okay. I think. Well, I mean, and, and honestly, for North Carolina, that's a great thing, and I'm glad that you give them that much credit. Well, they've shown no signs of distress in the second half, making 59% of their shots from the floor. Sports Center tonight after Arizona UCLA with Nabil Kareem and Zubin Mahenti. They'll have a James Harden, Jason Tatum breakdown. Plus, their matchup in January ended with a brawl. Kansas and Kansas State squaring off again today, this time in Manhattan. And D lineman and linebacker coverage at the NFL Combine Sports Center after Pac 12 Hoops on ESPN and the ESPN app. Crowd wanted a foul in the backcourt. Gary A back up and defending for the Orange. Tar Heels in no hurry. Now they attack. Brooks will go to the line for two. Very nicely done for UNC. And one of the reasons why the crowd here got excited as Dolezal fouls out of this game was a play in the backcourt as Poe Anthony comes off the screen. You see Justin Pierce setting a legal screen in place. No reason for a foul to be called on that 
possession. And Dolajai hearing from his Hall of Fame head coach after fouling out. Brooks in the win against two, uh, NC State on Tuesday was 14 for 16 from the line. And he said he kept saying, in my head, thinking about my little brother Justin's name when I shot the ball because he's so cool under pressure. Wonder if he's doing the same thing here again this afternoon. Well, if it ain't broke, you don't fix it. Right. So I'm pretty certain it is. And when you see the basketball go through the hoop as confidently as it does right now with Garrison Brooks at the free throw line, I'm sure he has to have Justin on the brain. Two minutes to go. Hughes on the switch, drives on Brooks. One and done for Syracuse. Another rebound for North Carolina. And right now, Cole Hanley, Cole, I'm sorry, Cole Anthony, handling the basketball masterfully here at the end of this game. And part of the reason why you feel as though he was confident right yep. now. And this is the way he used to do it for my guy. Terrence Munch Williams of the PSA Cardinals <laughs> tuning in, checking this out. And you know what? I bet you what factors into my thoughts that we had a couple of minutes ago started this morning at 10 a.m. at shoot-around. Just a sense of calm and a and a good feel about this team that I wouldn't think those negative thoughts would have started creeping in at that point of the game. Well, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that they do have a win to their credit with the NC State game. Up until that point, they hadn't won any of those games. And so when you actually get over the hump and win that game and handle the possessions the right way at the end to be able to finish it off, that gives you confidence coming into this building. Corey, this building has been here for four decades, and the roof has been an iconic symbol of the city skyline of Syracuse. But this is the last men's basketball game that will have that roof above it. Because after the women's game is played tomorrow, the dome will be closed down until September to be able to put a new roof on. The uh, building was built originally back in 1979 in the footprint of old Archbold Stadium here on campus. This is a rendering of what it will look like by the fall. And so we'll no longer have the air-supported bubble above us. It will be a hard, solid roof where they will hang a scoreboard, a video board from the center of it, which they've never been able to do here in the air-supported roof. Talked to Coach Beheim at uh, practice yesterday about that. He, he didn't seem to think it was going to be that big of a deal in terms of his feel next November when he comes back into the building for the next time to play a game. Court's going to be roughly the same. I mean, the sound system will change. The lighting will change. But by and large, he feels like, other than the roof, it's going to feel like the same place. Well, it's going to be interesting, of course, coming in here because one of the things you see is opposing teams come in, and the, one of the first things for freshmen is they look around at this building which they've heard so much about and many have never played in and they're in awe of the roof so going to be interesting to see people's reactions to it in seasons to come when the roof no longer remains Hughes gives up the foul that will send Brooks back to the free throw line and this roof when it was put on in the late 70s and then opened in 1980 was one of a number in North America but there are no more like this anymore Minneapolis doesn't have it anymore Vancouver doesn't have it anymore so they're going to keep up with the times. We haven't mentioned that this is senior day today, and so there is one senior for Syracuse, a walk-on, who's going to get his chance to play. His name is Sean Belby. He's from Brick, New Jersey. He was a prolific scorer at Christian Brothers Academy down the shore, and he's a legacy. His older brother, Kevin Belby, played at Syracuse for Coach Beheim, and you might remember that name because he's the general manager for Beheim's Army in the summertime that competes in the basketball tournament at TVT. So that's Sean Belby's older brother. And I have seen him in practice. He can shoot. If he gets an open look, he very likely might knock it down. And speaking of can shoot, Cole Anthony and Joe Gerard III exchanging hugs as Gerard III went out of the game. And now Cole Anthony checks out of the game. The two freshman point guards was a lopsided battle in this one. All in favor of Cole Anthony, who's maybe put together his best performance since returning from injury. Seven for ten from beyond a three-point arc. And two of those were desperation threes here in the second half at the end of the shot clock. So shooting the basketball extremely well here today. And one of the reasons why this may be the most dangerous 15 seed ever in a conference tournament. 
Sadibe, the only scholarship player on the floor for Syracuse. Brendan Paul misses the three. K.J. Smith off the bench for the first time with the basketball. Final possession if the Tar Heels want. Likely won't put it up, and this will do it. As North Carolina came in and really shot the lights out in the second half in particular, Roy Williams Club wins its second consecutive game. And it tells you what, Corey, when they get to Greensboro, they're going to be dangerous. They are going to be dangerous, and they will have their support. Believe that. Our final score, North Carolina 92, Syracuse 79. Coming up next on ESPN, Duke versus Virginia. Now let's send it to Reese Davis and the game day crew.